Bonjour and welcome on the Gospel Spice podcast, where you are invited to taste and see that the Lord is good. Gospel Spice is your Christ-centered podcast infused with in-depth biblical flavors and sprinkled with a dash of French culture to spice up your relationship with God. Here is your host, Stephanie Roussel, with a guest today. Today, I am with my friend, Jody Nisnik. She says that her passion is to help us create space for God in our lives. And one of the ways she does that is through her scripture meditation and her podcast, So Much More, Creating Space for God. She also has Bible studies, and we're going to talk about all the various ways that she invites us to create space for God in our lives. She is all about sound biblical truth, practical application, spiritual practices that aim to help us grow in our walk with Jesus. She's a pastor by training and by heart. She's going to tell us about how she served in ministry for over 12 years and how the Lord has moved her to a different season of life. She is all about teaching God's word by connecting spiritual truth to real life. And I just love her for it. Uh, so, Jodie Nisnik, welcome on the Gospel Spice podcast, dear friend. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're such a sweet presence. I love you. You and I have, how many times have we met in presence? Maybe twice, I think. It must have been <laughs> two times. It was a couple of years ago and then last year again, I think. And it's really such a joy to get to finally introduce you to my people here on Gospel Spice. I've been looking forward to this. So, Tell us about you. And I would say the one thing, if I had just, if I could just say one thing about you, Jodi, I would say that you love the Lord so much and that your love is contagious. So I want to, I want to be sick with the love of the Lord that you have. So tell us about you, about your passion for him and your passion in inviting others into this sweet experience of his presence every day. Mm, yeah. I do love the Lord deeply. I would say it's the lifeline that gets you through every day. And I spent a lot of time trying to uh, do my own lifeline to get me through the day, and none of that worked. And so I just realized the people that I admired, the people that felt like they had the joy of the Lord or this deep, settled peace were people that were deeply connected to God. And I wanted that in my life. So that's, I guess why I do what I do. So I uh, am Jody, <laughs> and I live in the Dallas, Texas area, and I have two adult children that are both married, and that's a strange season of life to be in. And I have one husband that I've had for <laughs> almost 30 years. One husband for 30 years. That's good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had one husband for 25 years and that's the way things should be. <laughs> well, and what a gift it is because yes. I don't think everybody gets that for lots of different reasons. And I don't take it lightly that we have been married for 30 years and that it has been a, a godly marriage where we're both pointing each other toward Jesus. And I know that's just a gift upon gift upon gift. So it's so rare. You're right. So rare. Such yeah. a gift to treasure and be grateful for. I worked in vocational ministry for about a dozen years. I was a pastor. I did a lot of different roles in the church from being pastor to women to adult ministries, discipleship. I was even our executive pastor for a little while. So I've done a lot of different things in the local church and I deeply love the local church. I love being a part of helping people come to know the Lord in a deeper way, take another step with Jesus. And so that, that period of my life was deeply forming for me. And then a few years ago, the Lord through lots of different circumstances and situations led me to, I, I don't know if I would say retire. Somebody just said I retired from being a pastor. And I thought, well, that's a nice way to put it, but I think I just shifted ministry focus. I feel like the Lord said he wanted me to move into something different. And so I've now been doing a ministry on my own, which is leading people into scripture meditation, into a slower faith, into discovering how to take a deep breath with Jesus, feel the peace of Christ. And I've had people tell me I'm a, I'm a bit of a peace bringer to them. And I kind of love that. I kind of love that the Lord has instilled in me this different pace of living and that that is something I get to pass on to people 
during through my calling and my gifts and how does it feel to have gone from a very public very extroverted ministry to something that's a lot more done you know from home where you have a very real online presence and influence but that's done mostly behind a mic behind a computer and I, I I can relate to that a little bit and so how does it feel for you really hard <laughs> amen sister I- I I am a more of an extroverted person. I love people and I love being with people and it's been really hard. It's hard to be alone and at home and really like the one who's setting the vision, doing the vision. I'm all things. I mean, I'm, I'm the janitor now. I'm the, you know, I'm the head chef. Uh, If anything has to happen in this little ministry, I'm the one that's doing it. And that's, hard because some of those things are very much using my left hand. And sometimes it is just a lot of behind the scenes work. I don't think people realize when they look at someone like you or me, Stephanie, the hours and hours and hours and hours that are put in, in that lonely space and lonely sometimes in a very good way, because lonely, I think also makes us really cling to the Lord in a different way. Whereas the busy space, the people space can have us running on adrenaline, have us running on the response instead of the deep well that we sit at the Lord's feet to draw from. So I, it's, it's hard and yet it's joyful. I like now that I'm three years into this, I love living at a different pace than I was living at. And I count it all joy and all gift, even the hard parts. Yeah. Oh, I, I hear you, man. We could go down that conversation, but I, I don't know that it's necessarily the most edifying conversation for our audience. However, you know, I think everyone and, and COVID has done that for so many of us has shifted so much. And, and I think the conversation, what you and I are saying, I remember feeling that way, but differently in other phases of life, maybe when I had young children and that my days were so different. So I think any transition of pace uh, and, and the forced slowing down that young children can bring or that maybe an illness can bring or that COVID brought or that we are bringing onto ourselves when we enter areas of ministry that are not necessarily from a social perspective suited the way we would like them to be necessarily. Uh, but, But the dependence on the Lord, the surrender, I remember talking with you, it must have been at the very beginning of your transition because it was probably two and a half years ago. Uh, at that conference we attended together and you were beginning this and you were in the early phases of that transition. Um, so so I think what I'm hinting at maybe is for someone listening to us who's feeling that shift and that uncertainty and maybe the, oh, I'm tired of being the janitor and the chef and all the things like you just said, there's hope on the other side of this, right? Because the Lord is in it. Mm-hmm. Yes, a hundred percent. In fact, one of the things I just wrote in my journal, maybe two days ago, is I kept hearing this this word over and over and over again. Sometimes I choose a word for the year. Sometimes I don't. It's kind of like if something, if the Lord starts to just echo something over and over and over again, that's what I write. And so for me, the word was through. And I feel like that is what you're describing is coming through all kinds of things. And For me this year, that word through meant there's going to be some hard things that happen this year. I already know it. Some friends that I dearly love are facing some really difficult challenges and some of them are probably going to end okay. And some of them probably aren't. And I am walking through that with them, but there will be a through. There is another side. Um, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, you will be with me. But then the other thing that the Lord convicted me of, it's not just that through journey, it's that he works through us to bring love, to be a part of, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done is something that's also been echoing in my soul. And we have agency in that in a lot of ways. We are to be the hands and feet of Christ. We're to be the kingdom bearers to the world. So he's saying, yes, I'm going to bring you through the highs and the lows of this year, but I'm also want to work through you. And will you be surrendered to me? 
So I think the word of encouragement for people that are in those seasons is there is always another side to it. And we do come through to that other side. Uh, I mean, the reality is though, sometimes the other side is heaven. Sometimes the other side is eternity. And that, that I think is hard for us to grasp because the days are long when we're in pain um, and when we feel like we're surrounded by darkness. So, but I do say just cling, cling, cling to the truth that God, God is with us every step of the way. And he, he will walk with us through whatever we're doing. Oh, amen. Uh, it, it's so interesting. You should mention that like the same themes have really been echoing in my own spirit. And you and I have not talked about this. So we're just finding, I'm fine. I'm, as I'm listening to you, I'm like, oh my goodness, I can echo so much of this. And, uh, you know, your name be glorified on earth as it is in heaven, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So much so that uh, one of my uh, friends and I, Ross, we literally just recorded an episode that is titled on earth as it is in heaven, on heaven as it is on earth. And that's going to air in a couple of weeks after you and I air this conversation. And so it's exactly the same idea. How can we be the hands and feet of Jesus through the seasons of our lives? Because we are his body. What does that look like? But in a way that isn't cliche or stale, but like really does dig down to the practicality of it. And that's exactly what you do actually every day uh, on your podcast, on your uh, social media, through all of the different books and, and, meditations that you offer on your website you are here to remind us of the sweet presence of God in the midst of our days Mm -hmm. yeah thank you that's a gift to even hear you say that it is my joy to companion people and to what I what I hope is that I am somebody that can take their hand as a brother or sister and say just sit for a minute and hear God's word and let the spirit be the one who teaches you. I don't need to have something clever to say, thank God. <laughs> I just need I just need to say his word. His word, exactly. That's the cleverest we're ever going to get is by repeating his word. Come on. Yeah. His word does not return void. And I believe that to the deepest parts of my soul is if I just speak his words, then he will use that. Um for his glory and for his good. Right. Into the receptive hearts, I would add, because his his word can be like, you know, the seed that falls on the highway and can be snatched up because it requires a receptive heart as well. And that's what you're cultivating. You're creating a presence where uh, you're inviting us to respond to the word of God, because it is, I mean, it is also up to us to respond to his word and to allow him to speak to us. We can, be, we can have deaf ears. Yes, we can. And we can also have resistant hearts. I think there's a lot of times too, where we start to hear a nudge from the spirit, or we feel like, oh, we should go read God's word, or I should sit down and pray, or I should, you know, we like have this little tap on the shoulder, so to speak. And we go, oh, but you know what? First I need to do is take care of this email. First, I need to unload the dishwasher. First, I need to go run these five errands. Uh, You know, and I think we can bypass these Holy Spirit moments because that doesn't feel productive for a lot of us. And I'm, I'm one who loves to produce things. I love to get things checked off my list. And so what I've had to do is actually just set time to say, well, this is the time I spend with the Lord. It's almost like I've made an appointment with him because for me, that works in my mind and heart to say, this is my time to sit down and be present with the Lord and to, to show up and just to let him, you know, remind me of truth and teach me truth and remind me of his love. Um, but yeah, I do think we do have to have receptive hearts too. And one of the ways we have receptive hearts is by creating space for him in our lives. Yeah. If I was a fly on the wall in your quiet times, your, your moments with the Lord, not so much what I would see. I'm not sure that I would see much per se, but invite us into those times. What does it, what is it like for you? Well, there's always a really good cup of coffee involved. <laughs> the other thing that I have been doing recently is lighting a candle. And I like that because it's just, it makes me just take a deep breath and realize that there's nothing sacred about lighting a candle. But what I'm saying is this is sacred space Mm -hmm. and I'm setting it apart. And so it's just a visual reminder 
that this is time for me to be with the Lord, the light of the world. There's lots of reasons why lighting a candle feels appropriate for me. And then I start with just a few minutes of kind of deep breathing, silence, staring out the window, just settling my soul, inviting the Lord to be uh, with me in that time. And at that point, I either turn to my journal because I've found that my mind is jumpy and there's something on my heart and I need to just journal it and get it out. Or I, I open the word. So it depends on where I'm at in the morning. And I go through a prayer book that I love that just has a scripture of a Psalm that I read all week and then a scripture of the day and then some kind of reflective readings. That's kind of been my rhythm. So if I journal first, then I go to my prayer book and read the scriptures of the day, or I start with the scripture and then I usually wind up journaling afterward anyway. So that's usually how I spend time with the Lord. Oh, I love it. Uh, we just had Chris Hall, the former president of Renovare, a couple of weeks ago on the show, and he described exactly the same routine. Coffee, mm-hmm. candle, scripture, right? <laughs> There's something to that, really. There really is. It's it's really cool. I completely agree with that. Oh, I mean, I think, yeah, I, I recently gave up coffee, so I'm struggling with that. But tea works too, actually, I'm finding. I just found, I don't know, I don't know if it's aging or what, but I used to love my coffee, but it's just been making me very jumpy. So oh. switch to tea. So I, I envy you because, man, there's nothing like that smell of coffee or that taste of it. I'm, I'm there with you on that. But the um, <laughs> but even even saying, you know, coffee or tea or candle or not, just the, I love how you're saying this is not a fixed routine. It is a, it is fixed in the sense that it's happening every day and you've made, you, you've, framed your life around that time so that that's not negotiable but within that time you're open to wherever he leads you what would you say to someone who's who's like man you know like I tried to do that but nothing happens it feels completely stale it feels like I'm staring at the ceiling the best part of it all is the coffee which is okay but shouldn't be (laughs) what would you say to them well I wonder I would say I wonder what's not working about that. And is it because you're trying to fit into a mold that somebody else has set for you? Maybe that's, oh, you're supposed to read a chapter from the Old Testament, a chapter from the New Testament and and 10 Psalms a day. I don't know what it is. Is there something that somebody has said, this is what your time with the Lord should look like? So I would encourage you to explore to not give up on the time, but to figure out what are some other things I could do. And maybe it's that you need to start with worship music, or maybe it's that you need to start by reading a good uh, Christian book where somebody is unpacking some kind of deeper concepts for you to just get your mind and heart pointed toward God. And then moving into scripture um, maybe you should try a guided scripture meditation in your earbuds, which I can point you to a good one. Yes. We'll talk about <laughs> that in just a minute. I promise. I really want you to talk about that. No, but I, but I mean, honestly, that's, that's what I would say is don't give up, right? There's a reason why you're sitting there every morning or afternoon or evening and trying. And it's because you have a deep longing in your heart to be present with God, because you know that he's your creator. He's the lover of your soul. And I will say there are also seasons when God feels further away. And so you keep showing up, but you try something new in those seasons, ways to just remind you of truth. Yeah. And even the candle, right? It's completely optional. It doesn't, if it doesn't do anything for you, it's completely just a suggestion, right? And it might work for a season. It might, it works better for me. I've noticed in the winter than in the summer. For some reason, summers are not candle seasons for me, but in the winter, definitely with a blanket and a hot cup with something to drink. And I would say, you know, the one thing I have found to truly make a difference when I'm in those seasons is to remember to invite the Lord in that moment, which sounds so simple, but like, Hey, I forget to do that. I'm like, I'm here to show up before the Lord and with him. And like, I forget to invite him. And I'm like, he's such a gentleman. Sometimes we need to acknowledge that he's waiting for us to invite him into this moment as well. So to do that, Lord, I'm here for you. I'm here to hear from you. This moment belongs to you. Do within it anything you want. I'm I'm not holding anything back. Show me what you want to show me. Give me the courage 
to walk into what you have, whatever it is today, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So guided meditation, tell us about that. (laughs) Come on. I really want anyone listening here to check out what you're doing and and to to maybe discover that this is how they can meet with the Lord in this next season of their lives. So tell us about what you do, uh, your approach, what it looks like, what people say about it your heart behind it. Mostly, I want to hear what's your heart for the person who has you in their ears. Mm. So guided scripture meditation is something that I was introduced to probably 10 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was in a season of my life where I was incredibly stressed, incredibly busy, and really struggling to find space to be with the Lord. And I was feeling like I was failing at reading my Bible. And a lot of it was because of what we just talked about. Somebody had told me, you need to read through the Bible every year. And here's your plan. And if you don't do it, you're failing. And I do think it's important to read. No, (laughs) well, I'm sorry. That's just (laughs) not right. Right. But (laughs) it works for some, but not others. And it works for some seasons and not others. And sometimes, you know, rake wide in scripture. And sometimes we need to dive deep and cover one square inch, but go really deep. And that's exactly right. And I would say, I agree. It's important to know the whole of scripture and to know the story. But I think there's something really beautiful in the slow reading of scripture. And that's become really important to me, especially in our fast paced, very distracted, very busy world to just pause and go deep in a few words with the Lord has been transformative to my relationship with him. So what I do in scripture meditation is take a small passage of scripture and I read it over people a number of times. It's the same passage and we read it multiple times. And each time there's a little different intention with it. So the first time it's just so you know where the scripture is going. And the second time we say, okay, spirit, would you guide and lead me to notice what you want me to notice in this passage? And this is where we're saying, okay, you've said the word is living and active, make it living and active in my life, make it come alive. And the spirit more often than not does help us notice something in his word. And so then after we've noticed a word or phrase, maybe it's even an idea that came because of reading it, we take a space and we say, okay, Lord, why? Why did you want me to notice that word, phrase, or idea? And how does that connect to my life right now? And then there's a third reading of scripture where we read, you listen to the passage again as I'm reading it, and you notice that word, phrase, or idea again, and you say, okay, Lord, how do you want me to respond to you? How do you, is it, is it that you just needed me to remember this truth? Is it that you're inviting me to do something different? Is it, is it that I need to take the step of trust? Is it that I just need to worship you? There's a whole bunch of different responses the Lord can lead us to. And we take some time then to just have a time of prayer and response to God. And then, and I love this last part, there's a fourth reading just to rest in the love of God. Because sometimes if we've been convicted of something or, you know, the Lord showed us something we weren't doing that he wants us to do, we could easily go to shame or we could easily go to, oh, why can't I get that right and berate ourselves? But what we need to do is just settle in and remember we serve a loving God, a loving father who loves us with an infinite amount of love that we could actually never fathom. And so we sit and we rest and let those words come to us one more time and be surrounded in love. So it's really praying God's word is scripture meditation. And it's really just asking the Lord to lead us where he wants us to go. One of the things I really love about scripture meditation is even really familiar passages, God will use in our lives in new ways. Doesn't mean the passage means something new, right? God's word doesn't start to mean different things, but it does in some ways because we are different. And so it means something different to us in that moment. So that's what I'm doing with scripture meditation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. It's, um, I mean, the word is the word is the word, right? But I, I like to think of it of, you know, you know, on our phones, when we have all these filters for the picture, the picture, you take a picture and then you have, I don't know, 20,000 filters, you can run it through. So it's the same picture, 
but the filter is going to make it look different. And sometimes actually so different, it's actually distorted. And that's not what the word of God, that's not what we're talking about. But, you know, maybe highlighting the blues or the reds or whatever. And, and that's what he does. Like the picture is the same, but he's highlighting by his spirit something a little different. Uh, or, you know, for recipes, sometimes you'll use more or less of a spice and it's going to taste different, but it's really the same recipe. Uh, it's mm -hmm. I am mm -hmm. so there with you. I was in Ephesians one on my own this morning and exactly that. Like I literally, I was like, Lord, I just want to read because Ephesians is definitely like probably one of my favorites. Um, and so I love spending time in Ephesians. And so I was like, Lord, I want to enjoy. I don't want to enjoy this. I don't want to rush it. So we spent a solid hour on three verses, you know, and I love it. And it's so beautiful. And I'm so familiar with Ephesians. And yet it's like, yeah, you use a different translation or sometimes I use the French, sometimes I use the English, but there's, we have the luxury in English of so many different translations too, that really helps as well. And to have the, the guidance of someone else, sometimes in season, sometimes it's just me and the Lord. I don't want anyone else's voice, but sometimes it's just helpful to have someone else's um, guidance for that. Cause we are the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's a, it's a, we forget, don't we, in our individualistic American culture that it's a group effort. We're together, the body of Christ, mm -hmm. not individually. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm, so, um, Jody, we're coming up on Easter. I know you've got a pretty deep, thorough, fresh invitation for Holy Week for us. Tell us about that, how we can enter. And again, it's exactly the conversation we're having. I mean, I don't know how old you are, but like you've been through Easter quite a few times. And so have I, even though I didn't grow up a Christian, like I've been through a solid 30 years of Easter as a Christian. What can there possibly be to Easter that I haven't seen or done or experienced before? Well, that's where the beauty of the infinite spirit and creativity of the Lord comes in. And I suspect that's what you're going to invite us to do this Easter. So, yeah. So being in this season of Lent, Lent is even newer to me uh, with you, I wasn't raised a Christian either. And so when I first started, you know, practicing Easter, going to church, because I really did believe in Jesus 365 days a year, not just that one <laughs> day. Um, and then I was introduced to the season of Lent, which is roughly the 40 days, you know, before Easter as a time to really prepare our hearts to enter into Easter with more intention. And like you said, it's the same story. And I think sometimes we get fooled. Well, we know how that story ends. Yay, Jesus is risen. That's amazing. But I think we have to actually slow down and contemplate what would life be like if he hadn't? What would our life be like if, if that wasn't, if we weren't living on this side of the cross? And so that's what Lent helps me do. It helps me slow down and really think about those things. So I created a whole series of guided meditations to help us lead up to Easter. And in particular for that Holy Week, that week right before Easter, I'm doing a Maundy Thursday, which is the Thursday before Easter. Um, Maundy is a strange word. It's not a word that we really use, but it, it's basically reflecting on the Last Supper and the account of the Last Supper. Because when we walk through the timeline of Jesus, that was what was happening on Thursday. And so we walk through the foot washing and we walk through Jesus passing the elements one last time with the disciples and the last words that he shared with the disciples. And then we move into Good Friday and Good Friday is the, is the dark day, the day of, you know, all the lights go out. Jesus, Jesus is hung on the cross and even just pausing and wondering if I had been one of the disciples, what would I have been thinking? I've given my life to follow this man. And now he's dead. Like, yes, we look at scripture and we go, but he said all the time, I will raise again. But you know, they, to them, they haven't seen this before. So they're going, I have no idea what's happening. And we always say, you know, the, the disciples were so clueless and, but, but come on, I would, I would not have known any better. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have, I, I would have been right there with them as dumb and clueless as we like to imagine them. And so. grieving. They were his friends too, you know, so confused, grief. All, yeah. And then there's, there's Holy Saturday, which is just this space of almost nothing happening. Yeah. And, and then that then leads to Easter morning and resurrection Sunday. 
and contemplating the cross. And I love the meditation that we do on Easter Sunday because it's it's Mary going to the cross, the Mary's going to the cross, um, and saying, Lord, where 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 have you taken him? They think that Jesus is the gardener, and they're like, Why is his body gone? Like they cannot wrap their heads around the fact that he is not there and he is risen from the grave. And I love that Jesus reveals this to two women. And I love that they are the first carriers of the gospel as they rush to the disciples to say, you are not going to believe what just happened. Our Lord has risen from the dead. It's true. Everything he said was true. They're the ones that get to witness that. And um, it's just, there's so much value in women bestowed in that moment. And um, so anyone that says that the, the that Jesus or the gospel or scripture is not, uh, you know, supporting and and exhorting women to to go and share the gospel and to be full participants in the church. I would say that account right there is really hard for them to wrestle with. What are you hoping for this Easter for yourself? I think I'm hoping that once again, I show up Easter morning and I truly understand in a new, or I shouldn't say truly understand because I don't think I'll fully ever understand what Jesus has done for me but I will understand in a new and a deeper way, the sacrifice that God made so that I could be a part of his family, that I could be a daughter of Christ so that I could participate in not only eternity, but, but eternity now and being a part of the mission going forward that he's created me to do good work, all of the things like that's what I hope I show up Easter morning and I have a renewed awakening to the joy of my salvation personal revival so that we can go and tell others we can be like mary and tell others that it wouldn't be just another easter morning that's Mm -hmm. ambitious and bold and yet i think that's the kind of request he loves to answer Mm -hmm. i'm excited i can't wait to see what happens this easter in our hearts yours and mine and who's listening and watching as we make space for him, as we create space for God, which is the entire theme of your ministry. So as we end, would you mind praying for our audience? And before we do that, just very quickly, where's the best place to find you? Well, the best place to find me is at my website and that's jodynisnick.com. I imagine you'll put that in the show Absolutely. notes because unfortunately, my name is not easy to spell. <laughs> it's just like yours, Stephanie. Yes, yes. hey, girl. <laughs> All kinds of ways you could get it wrong. <laughs> but it's J-O-D-I-E-N-I-Z-N-I-K. Uh, and then the other place that I think most people are finding me right now is on my Instagram, which is at Creating Space for God. Mm-hmm. And, and we'll link that for sure. I love your, your daily Instagram devotionals. They're beautiful. Thank you. Would you mind praying as we end? Praying for people, praying for Easter, praying mm-hmm. for God to do what only he can do. Let's do it. Gracious Lord, we are so thankful for you and for what you have done for us, how you made a way for us to be in relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is a light for us, that it can become life for us through you. And we ask that, uh, I ask, Lord, that every person listening to this would have a renewed awakening to your word, that your word would become living and active like Hebrews tells us it is, and that you would use it to penetrate our soul, that you would use it to help us know your will and your way, that you would use it to help us know your deep love for us, that you would use it to help us feel grounded and secure. And Lord, we pray that when we open the word, you lead us in it. Help us to just know more of who you are and to know the deep peace that you're offering us. As we walk into Easter, wherever that leads us, church or a sunrise service or space in our living room, Lord Jesus, help us to just have a renewed joy for our salvation and a renewed calling because of what you've done for us. And we pray that you would do this because it is something that only you can do. We pray that we that you would do this for our good and we pray that you would do it for your glory. Amen.
Mm. Amen and amen. God's glory or delight. It's my motto. And that's basically what I heard you pray as well, right? That we would delight in the glory of God at Easter and every other day of the year. Oh, amen. Jody, thank you so much, dear friend. I always leave our times together, which are too rare, by the way. But when that ha whenever we spend time together, I, I leave encouraged, inspired. And uh, you just have this god-given ability to make others feel seen and loved and so i want everyone to feel seen and loved by the lord through your gentle ministering hands so thank you jody so much thanks stephanie hi jonah here thank you for being part of the gospel spice family if you've enjoyed this episode you will love receiving our newsletter it contains value-packed free gifts and rich content each month it's at gospelspice.com slash sign up There is always something new and exciting happening around here, and I don't want you to miss out. Sign up at gospelspice.com slash sign up. Did you know Gospel Spice has a YouTube channel? There's exclusive content there too, so join Gospel Spice on YouTube. Also, please give us a star rating and a comment on your podcast listening app. Your reviews actually really do make a difference to help others discover and experience Gospel Spice. As always, we are praying for you. You can confidentially email us your prayer requests and praise items at the email address contact at gospelspice.com. It's our privilege to pray for you. So, I'll leave you with four things to do. Please pick one and do it at your convenience. One, sign up on our website for our newsletter to receive gifts you're going to love. Two, find us on YouTube and see what content we've put together to help you grow closer to Jesus. Three, rate Gospel Spice on your listening app. It's one of the easiest ways to share the gospel. And finally, four, tell us how we can pray for you. Merci. Merci.